In this video, we're going to begin to take a look at um, the unit circle, which is one of the primary um, topics that we discuss in trigonometry and that you'll continue to see as you move through higher level mathematics like calculus and differential equations and so forth. And so I want to begin in this video to look at how to define the six trigonometric functions as it relates to the unit circle. A couple of things I want to point out. We've been focusing on the definitions of the trigonometric functions as they relate to right triangles. And one of the challenges um, with right triangle trigon trigonometry is that you're limited to acute angles, which measure somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees. And because of that fact, um, we only ha end up with positive trigonometric values. And we talked about that um, previously. Also, typically when we're dealing with right triangles, we deal with um, measurement in terms of degrees um, as opposed to radians. So right triangle trigonometry uses mainly degree measurement, which most people are familiar with. But as we move into the discussion of the unit circle, the unit circle tends to use primarily radian measure, which most people are not as familiar with, but radian measure is used extensively in calculus because it's a little bit easier um, to deal with than degree measure. One of the benefits of the unit circle is we can expand our definition of the trigonometric functions to specific angles that are between 0 degrees and 360 degrees, which is a full revolution around a circle, or between 0 and 2 pi, if you think about it in terms of radians. So the definition, you know, what is a unit circle? If we're going to talk about it, what is it? The unit circle is a circle with a radius of 1 with its center at the origin of a rectangular coordinate system. So let me see if I can kind of sketch you a rough picture. Now you may remember that for a circle, okay, just a kind of a quick review thing here, really the formula for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared where h and k correspond to the center of the circle and r represents the radius. Now first of all, let me remind you that the radius goes halfway um, across the circle. So if we had a coordinate plane, which you hopefully you're familiar with, okay, and I'm going to mark where my one unit would be roughly. Okay, our center of the circle would be on the origin, which has the ordered pair 0, 0. So my h and k are 0, and then my radius goes from the center out to a value of 1 in every direction. Now it's a little bit hard for me to draw that in every direction. So roughly, and again this is a very rough sketch of a circle, okay, this would be your circle. So if you plug that in, how do we end up with x squared plus y squared equals 1? Because you would have x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 1 one squared. And we don't typically write the zeros in there, so we would have x squared plus y squared equals 1. So there is the formula for the unit circle and how it is derived. So now we want to think about defining the six trigonometric functions in terms of the unit circle. And to do that, I want to superimpose, I want to draw a triangle onto our unit circle. So here we have a unit circle, okay? So our origin is at the center, which is 0, 0, OK? 
okay and we have a radius of one so I'm going to draw out a radius to see and the radius goes from the center to a point on the circle so this is my radius which has a length of one and so then if I rough sketch in a right triangle okay so there's my right triangle remember from good old basic algebra that the distance traveled horizontally is represented by X and the distance represented vertically is your Y. And so typically this point here where we intersect the circle would be an ordered pair X, Y. But let's think about it in terms of, of the unit of the right triangle. So if this angle here, which is in standard position, where we start on the positive X axis and rotate, and we're going to call this angle T. Now we could use theta or whatever. Um, so if we think about that and think about our definitions of our trig functions, let's think about what we would have. The sine of angle T is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now again, think about it here in terms of your triangle. Next to T, the adjacent side is the X, the opposite side is the Y, and the radius represents our hypotenuse. Okay, so if I plug those values in, I have Y, which is the opposite side, over hypotenuse of 1. So the sine of T corresponds to the Y coordinate of the ordered pair. So now we can look at it as an angle and end up with a real numeric value. Okay, now let's think about cosine. The cosine of angle T would be adjacent over the hypotenuse, which gives us x over a hypotenuse of 1, which is x. So now our ordered pair, which we are tra traditionally view as x comma y in terms of our trig function, can be written as the cosine of the angle sine of the angle. Okay, so our ordered pair x comma y becomes cosine comma sine. And then the third one that we have there we would that we use a lot is the tangent. So the tangent of angle T is opposite over adjacent which would give us y divided by x. Now we do have to have a caveat here that x cannot be 0 because you cannot have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. So the ratio um, of y to x becomes our tangent. And those are the three most common ones. So we have the sine of angle T is, corresponds to the y-coordinate of the ordered pair. Cosine of angle T corresponds to the x-coordinate of the ordered pair. The tangent is the ratio of y over x. And then remember, this second column, they're the reciprocals. Okay, so for sine, the reciprocal is cosecant. And so we basically would flip it over. So we have the cosecant of angle T is 1 over Y. Now here again, you do need to realize that we have the little caveat that Y cannot be 0, again, because you cannot have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. And we had that for the tangent that X could not be 0. Similarly for the secant, which is the reciprocal of cosine, we flip over the x. 
so that we have 1 over x is equal to the secant of t. And again, we need the little restriction that x cannot be 0 because you can't have 0 in the denominator of a fraction. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So we flip it over and it becomes x over y, which is the cotangent of t. And again, we do have to have the restriction that y cannot be 0. So that gives us our six basic trigonometric functions in terms of an ordered pair or in terms of real numbers. Now we're going to look at some special angles on the unit circle um, in the next video.